governor was involved through the use of sub-county admin and ward admin in the public participation process, what would your answer be? That is absolutely not true. We have separation of powers. Madam Speaker, you are aware that even when we have public participation for the budget appropriation, the executive does its public participation and the assembly also does its public participation. This particular public participation came, was originated from the assembly. Madam Speaker, there is no way that the executive could have been allowed to carry this public participation. So it is not true. And in instances where the event was to take place at the sub-county headquarters, isn't it natural that the sub-county admin would usher in uh, the guest. Is that the position? Yes, they could usher in because mostly sometimes when it is done, Madam Speaker, in the headquarters, sometimes we allow, they, they are told to arrange for the public participation. The arrangement is bring the chairs, allow us to use this facility, then when the public participation ends, that after they have organized where we are, the public participation is, if it is for the assembly, their engagement ends there. Thank you. To my last limp of uh, this uh, questioning, did you have an opportunity to interact with the allegations in the uh, notice of motion for impeachment and conduct your own investigations on the allegations? And if so, what was the nature of your interaction with? Yes, Madam Speaker, I had an opportunity to engage and do my own investigations. This is after the Honorable Siocha requested me to do second the motion. And voluntarily, because I represent special interest, I decided first of all to familiarize myself with the issues. Is it true? that what they are saying is correct. So I went ahead and uh, requested, requested the number of Dennis from Honorable Sioja, and I requested him to be in the company of the wife because I did not want to talk to Dennis alone. They made arrangements and we did meet in town and they took me through the process of how they struggled to raise this money. And what pained me, Madam Speaker, is that the lady was expectant after struggling for 12 years. Madam Speaker, I'm a woman. I know sometimes what women go through, particularly when you cannot conceive and give children. And the, the lady sat, Nyaboke sat, narrating how they had even to separate shortly with the husband because she couldn't contain whatever that she was going through. This gave me a motivation. And I thought to myself, being a woman, representing youth, representing people living with disability, I had to rise to the occasion. And I said, I am truly going to take it upon myself to second this motion. Whatever that Dennis went through with the wife, I am standing here as a woman, Madam Speaker, painfully explaining an MCA earns 86,000. And I ask myself as MCAs who are struggling to take our children to school, then somebody asked me to give 800,000. How long, Madam Speaker, will I save to give a bribe of 800,000? That, for me, touched me. Even when I was at contributing to this motion in the House, Honorable Madam Speaker, I said I don't want to talk about the law. I want to speak to the morals. Where is our society now, Honorable Madam Speaker? I earn 86,000. Somebody tells me to give 800,000 from where? That pained me on Madam Speaker. And I did voluntarily walk. I want, promised to walk with them this journey. 
that justice must be served to this Nyaboke, justice must be served to Dennis. That is my conviction, and that is why patiently I stand in this Senate wanting to convince. What's your point of order, Senator Karungo? Madam Speaker, you know, it's late. It's almost um, 10 p.m. If the witness can stick to the issues, we did not come here for preaching and debate. We want to be directed to the issues as submitted. It's not a matter of emotions. We don't vote on emotions. We vote on facts. So can she uh, restrain herself to answering the questions. When it comes to preaching, we'll be ready. Uh, Council, uh, Council, on that point of order, I believe you have filed in documents and statements and affidavits from the witnesses. I am already ruling on the first point of order, and I've not finished. I would uh, request counsel to guide the witness so that we make the process very seamless and we confine ourselves. You confine the witness to the documents that have been produced before the Senate. Thank you, Madam Speaker, for the guidance. I'm actually on my last question on the issue. I just